Okay, so this one here, I said this shape is a triangle and a parallelogram. All right, that was to help you apply triangle and parallelogram rules for this shape. All right, so we've got the triangle, okay, and we've got the parallelogram. So when you worked out the area of this, I think you've all got this now, haven't you? We did the area of the little triangle for that, and you worked that out by doing? Base multiplied by height, so 8 multiplied by 4. Divide that by 2, and we get 8 multiplied by 4 is 32. Divide by 2 is 16, and I'm going to remember my square centimetres. Yeah. Now, do you notice how what I've written, I have written along the line like this, but I've never lied. What I saw some people do was say 8 multiplied by 4 is 32, divide by 2 is equal to 16. All right? I have lied there, haven't I? Because 8 multiplied by 4 is equal to? 32, not 16. And I'm saying that it's all equal. If I put it, so this um, writing along a line that some of you were doing, put your hand up if you, uh, we told you during the quiz, don't write along the line like that. Put your hand up if you did it. There's at least three people, right? Yeah. Okay. Try not to do that then. What is okay is what I did, which was show all my work. Now, the reason why I wrote in a line like that is because I know I've got a second thing to do but I've shown the whole thing. Now, what you were saying, is it okay not to do the divide by two? It's okay to do the 32, but I've still written the divide by two there, yeah? yeah. All right, so we've got to be careful with our, the way we write things and using our equal sign. So then I've got the area of the parallelogram. You notice how I've put little symbols by, so I know which one I'm working out. And how do I do that? Well, that's base multiplied by height, so my length. Nine multiplied by four. Okay. Why four, Jai? Because if the, for the four in the triangle, if you move it over to where the parallelogram is, yep. it's the same length. And actually, I might even be able to do exactly what you said. So if I take that line and move it over, look, it is still the same height, isn't it? So the 4 can be applied to both shapes. So the base multiplied by height is the same, and 9 multiplied by 4 is 36 square centimetres. And then the area of this shape, we would do 36 square centimetres, add 16 square centimetres, and we get the answer. Milo. Thanks, you put your hand up. No one else did. So. Thank you for doing that. Okay. Did anyone forget to add up at the end? Or? Okay, that's a good thing there, isn't it? Um, did anyone... Sienna and Marley, you're not paying any attention here, and now that's on video. Stay focused on what we're talking about, not your pencils and things in your, you know. Right, there's a reason why I'm focusing on these two questions. This one, do you recognise this is similar to that icosahedron problem? Yeah. How do we do it? You have to do um, this. But what, what's your thought oh, process first? So, base times height. Before that? What's just the basic thought process? What I look at it and go, oh, what the... Three triangles, therefore, I need to work out the area of one triangle, one triangle and multiply by three. three. Just like the area of one triangle multiplied by 20, yeah? So we're going to do 
three lots of the area of one triangle. So I can write my working down like that. So I can now say it's three lots of, what's the area of one triangle, we would say? Base multiplied, Base multiplied by height. And then all of that divided by two. So then I've got three multiplied by, the base is five. Yes. Multiplied by six, but we have a divide by two. So we can do our steps. So we've got five multiplied by six is 30, divide by two. So that's three multiplied by 15, which equals 45 squares. Good. Okay. All good? I'm showing my working. Uh, I am all, already starting to take shortcuts here. What are the shortcuts that I've taken? Yeah. Lift. I didn't write my centimetres in there. So this three look could easily look like a centimetres and that could confuse people. So I could put my centimetres and centimetres and therefore 30 would actually be square centimetres already. 30 divided by 2. No, um, like I said, as long as your answer has the appropriate ones, um, it's just about... What's the biggest problem do you think people have in, in quizzes and tests? Or the uh, anxiety levels. Anxiety levels, yeah, and that might cause you to make this mistakes. And what tools do your teachers or techniques do your teachers ask you to do to make sure you don't make mistakes? Check when you're in a test, you can't oh, study, yeah. Test check test. your work, yeah. And this is one of them as well. We should go through, and if we can keep our units in, it means my thought level about what I'm doing is just that little bit higher than just rushing and repeating, yeah? Especially in a test like this where we are just doing the same thing over and over and over again. I know one of you forgot to start to do the divide by two when we hit triangles, and I put that down to where you hadn't divided by two on the first page, so it's just like in, in motor, like kind of re repeating fashion, yeah? Just repeat, 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 and they didn't stop to think, oh, something's changed here. So just that extra little bit of thought. Now, the reason why I wanted to ask you these questions, uh, I did ask you something to have a thought at the end of last lesson. If you ignore the fact that it's a triangle and a parallelogram, or you ignore that it's three triangles, what shapes do I draw? have I drawn? So I think I can get rid of that. And let's get rid of those. Yep. Trapezoids, haven't I? So I'm not asking you to do that on your quiz, okay? We have trapezoids. So by doing those two questions, we've actually come up with two ways to work out the areas of trapezoids. Okay, you've done it. All right, two different ways. Now there is, that's not necessarily the most appropriate ways to do it or the most effective ways. So what I asked you was to think about um, how could we work out the area of any trapezoid. I gave some shapes, I'm giving, gonna give them to you back in a second. But what I want to do is I want you to think about this, all right? In your maths books now, maybe. You can go to the front. Let's do Do you remember what criterion B is? Um, Wrong subject, I think. Oh, wait, that's D. Nope. Pardon? Nope, that's D. So A is skills and knowledge, C is communication, D is applying things to a real-world context. Research. 
No, nope, wrong subject again, I think. No. Nope. B is patterns, spotting patterns. Oh. Okay. Now, what a lot of people think is when we do spotting patterns, we've got a list of numbers and we just try and find a, a rule. But that isn't what it only means. When you spot patterns, what you're actually doing is you can spot patterns in everything you do. So we've been working on area and we've used parallelograms and we've used triangles and you've actually already used those uh, shapes to work out the area of a trapezoid. So you've actually followed on a process, okay? And you've extended upon it and you've applied it in a different way. And that's what our patterns criterion is about. It's not just here's a list of numbers, find a rule for the numbers. It's in everything. It's can you spot, use the knowledge that you've already got and apply it in a new way, right? So, what I'm going to ask you to do, for criterion B, the basic is spot a pattern, okay? Then we can apply your pattern. To another example okay so that would mean well I've you I've worked out the area of a, a trapezoid one way well what if I draw another trapezoid can I use what I've already found to answer that question Does that make sense now the next step then would be to generalize that pattern and do you know what that would mean in this sense? No? To generalise something means to be able to apply it to any trapezoid that I'm given. Right? To be able to communicate that to someone else. Can I say, and you've already been working on ways with your triangles and your parallelograms. Uh, what, what have you got that generalises patterns with your shapes? Yeah, so you've already been working on ways to generalise the knowledge that you've been getting. Right? I've not just been telling you stuff, you've been finding stuff out for yourself. All right? But you've been working with things that generalise our stuff on area. What are they? Yes, so what's in your formula booklets, guys? A formula. A formula. All right. Your formula the formula for the area of the shape, that's how you generalized the pattern in a formal way so that you can then say, right, if you give me any tra trapezoid, I can use my formula to work out the area of it. Now, what that means is sometimes you spot a pattern that's a bit complicated and you can use it with the numbers and things, but you would find it very difficult to generalise it and always do that. All right? So what we would hopefully do is find, well, maybe there's a different pattern that I can apply and I can generalise. So what we try and do, you see, is we, we go down to the next step, down to the next step, can we generalise? If not, we go back and try and spot another pattern. So we don't just give up. Some things might be harder to, to generalise than others. So what I'm going to ask you to do, um, I've given you back these shapes. Think about those questions you've just done. Can you, all right, I know we've only got five minutes, let's go so quick when you're late after assembly, right? Is it possible for you to start thinking of ideas for ways to generalise and come up with a formula that would always work for the area of a trapezoid? Everyone clear about what I want? Yeah. yeah. Cool, good. Right. 